Hello and welcome to another live stream. How are you doing today? <clears throat> All right. Let's get this show on the road. All right. Let's see if it, let's see if FixLogic will post this soon. I guess Facebook. <laughs> kind of having a slow connection. Hey, Steven, how are you doing? All right. Welcome, welcome. Facebook is being super slow. <clears throat> I don't know if it's my connection or what. All right, there's one. And there is two. All right, got it. <clears throat> All right, again, hello, welcome. Thanks for joining me today. Let me pop over to my chat. All right. Hello, hello. Okay, so this is where we left off last week with this uh, punk rocker guy. I've I've changed a little bit more. Um, you know, I've just, after the stream, I was mucking around with it a little bit. Just trying to get some of those shapes closer. But, um, <clears throat> hey comics, will you be doing any Halloween theme model th models this month? I might, if I find a good, uh, concept to model, I might do that. Um, we'll, ha we'll have to see. I, I wanted to finish this one up and there's one more that I wanted to do from, uh, Josh. So, um, we'll see. Okay. So let's, let's take a look at this. I thought, you know, I thought I met edit it a little bit more maybe I didn't good skinny head huh I can't recall <clears throat> yeah his nose is a bit long isn't it Steven I need to tweak it but first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna Z remesh his face and then we'll we'll go and I am doing well thank you very much <laughs> all right <clears throat> so duplicated him now he is asymmetric with this little uh, uh scar above his lip but we're just going to ignore that and i'll put it in again later so let's z remesh it because you can see this is a uh, sculptress pro mesh and we're just going to z remesh it with about yeah about six thousand yeah let's try that <clears throat> well thanks neil Yep, I just barely launched a brand new um, October student challenge. If you are a student in my workshop, um, and I'm I'm pretty excited about this one because we're we're treating it like it's a freelance gig, and we have an art director. Um, his is uh, Mark Matessi. He's, he's an ex Disney feature guy, um, so that's gonna be that's gonna be super cool. And we ha also have. Um, Another guy by the name of Sweeney, his last name's Sweeney, right? Is that right? Oh my goodness, I, I'm still getting used to that. But here, um, Swendley, Swendley, not Sweeney, Swendley, <laughs> close. Sorry about that, if you're listening. So um, <clears throat> I was kind of unfamiliar with his design work until now. Really, really cool. Anyway. I'm doing it a little differently this time where usually I will have the students pick the concepts, but I'm giving them one concept for everyone to do. And then we're going to art direct it at the end, which will be interesting. So we'll see how that goes. I'm excited about it. Do you have anatomy in your course? Yes, I do. <clears throat> and I'm working on getting more in there. But yes, I actually have a section called stylized anatomy. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I have a little bit of a head cold today, so I apologize for clearing my throat, but this did pretty good. All right. So let me, I want to project one onto the other. Uh, 
let's see, project all, yes. All right, so we have, this is the updated version, a little softer. But now we can um, make some adjustments to this. I usually save the larger adjustments, excuse me, until after I've retopologized it uh, because it's easier to make those adjustments when the mesh is a lower density. Hey, Saeed, how you doing? Hey, Marcus. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, it looks like I lost some of my some of my detail. I'm doing that. That's okay. Let's see. Awesome. Sounds great. I don't know how to say your name. Is it is it Edge or EG? I'm not sure. Thank you so much. That'd be great. Hey Nikita. Welcome, welcome. I wanna pull this eye meat out a little bit. I was thinking about making or giving him uh some lower eyelashes just to just so I can outline these eyes I'm not sure if I want to do that or not but I might <clears throat> yeah he's, I still got to build that earring that is true I'm just resharpening these edges How long did it take you to learn ZBrush? Um, well, I was a modeler before I learned ZBrush, so, um, so I had some modeling and artistic knowledge coming into it. But it took me, I would say, about one, about a year, maybe six months to a year, to get proficient with it. It is a different way of thinking about modeling in general, though, that's for sure. Wondering why this wasn't being symmetrical. There we go. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> hey, what's up, Chris? Yeah, it's just like anything. It can be frustrating until you until you learn how to use it. You know. Once you know how to use it, it's very freeing. You can essentially model anything you want. But getting to that point does take some time for sure. Kind of editing his jaw there. Hey, Saeed, sure. Yep, symmetry fun for sure, symmetry bugs. From Turkey. <laughs> so, uh, what you can do is look at this little head in the top right corner. That will tell you your orientation as far as your scene goes. So you make you can make sure you're building in the proper uh, direction if you look at this. And so if that head is turned around, but your head 
of your character is facing forward, that means it's backwards. Or if you're building it like upside down like this, and the head is, you know, not oriented properly. <laughs> that little head is, is pretty helpful up there. some of these edges back in. <clears throat> You're sculpting a realistic face, what book would you recommend me? Um, I don't know that I really have a book. Uh, I would go look up Chris Costa on YouTube. He has some really, really good stuff for realistic characters. He's probably one of the best in my opinion. So it's, I don't know, Neil, do you know how to spell Chris Costa? If it's, it's, I think it's C-R-I-S, then with a K-O-S-T-A, I believe. He gave a, pre I think he gave a presentation at the ZBrush Summit. Um, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. It was really, really good. Yeah, I can't remember if his last name his last name is with a C or a K. Okay, it's kind of, this guy's face is so crazy. It go it swoops so much. Grimmel the Grizzly. <laughs> Hi, Steven. <laughs> okay, let's uh, turn the opacity of this down. And I just kind of want to see how off I am. So let's see. Uh, not too bad. His nose is still a bit longish. See if I put his if I line his eyes up. <clears throat> All right. Now I'm going to raise yeah, his mouth and his nose are quite off. There we go. <clears throat> And pull the sides of his nose up, I think. Yeah, something like that. All right. <laughs> That's a little better. This guy makes me laugh, that's for sure. Most of the time I pick concepts based on if they make me laugh or not. And this guy is just, he's so funny. It's like, <laughs> uh, so serious. Why so serious? Wanting to pull those brow, the brows out a bit more. The angrier and angrier. He's so angry. <clears throat> you mainly just sculpt uh, 2D concept artworks with the aim of replicating it as accurately as possible, or do you ever reference a bunch of different concepts and sculpt a new character? I've done both. Usually, I'll I do the first one, um, just because that's that's the that's typically the job you know, is you'll get handed a concept and asked to recreate it in 3D. 
Um, but occasionally I'll do, and usually it's from like a real person. Um, so if I'm doing a caricature or a stylized version of a person, I'll, gra I'll gather a whole bunch of um, concept arts or uh, reference art from that person and then sculpt them. So I've done both. Make his eye bags much larger. Sorry, this is tweaky tweak stage, so it takes a while. Tweaky tweak stage. Um, I think I am going to just, I want to outline his eyes with a little teeny tiny edge there. Whoa, come back. I want to pull his brows out. They're not stuck in his head. Okay. All right. So to do that, um, Keep seeing things. It's kind of the name of the game, isn't it? Just like keep seeing stuff, adjusting, seeing stuff, adjusting. <laughs> okay. Um, so to make this, I usually like to turn it to the side like this. Just come in here with the topology brush and just draw some new geometry on here. Because the low low resolution mesh is not dense enough to hold the poly paint. Okay, come on. There we go. <clears throat> so let's uh split on mass points it's clear to me that the secret of unlocking zbrush's true power lies in following specific workflows that yield results particularly for creating stylized characters as you do uh yeah you could say that you could say that there's definitely workflows to follow but that being said there isn't there isn't like one true workflow to rule them all right it's it's just knowing several different workflows and which one works best for the situation um so that's kind of a the second part of it oops still on that brush <clears throat> there we go and i want to make him kind of a these are, this is the blue color from his eyes, which is interesting, but I think I want to go with uh, more of a brown, like a warmer tone. Something like that, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. I probably should have went around the upper eyelid as well. Maybe I will. I'm liking what that's looking like. <laughs> Denets is the one ring. The one workflow to rule them all. There can there can be only one. Okay. Let's make his earring, shall we? So to make an earring like this is pretty simple. <clears throat> um, you can just do an append and you see this ring 3D right here. Um, you can do that, but uh, typically what I like to do is grab the ring from the, um, the Gizmo 3D. Hey, what's up, Peter? How are you? Thanks so much. So um, you can go to this, this uh, gear and underneath here, there's a whole bunch of different primitives. So you can click on one. Um, okay, looks like 
We gotta turn off symmetry and center this gizmo. There we go. Let's try it again. <laughs> you have to be on the new geometry. That's why. You're good? Good to hear. I'm good as well, thanks. There we go. It's funny seeing him through the ring, like some Warner Brothers cartoon. Okay, so what you can do is you can see, once you select that ring, you can see you get all these, these handles. Uh, let me solo this just so you can see it. So you get these handles, and each of these handles does something different. Um, like coverage is, uh, if you don't want to have a full ring, you just want a partial one, you can adjust that. Um, L divide is the length of the division. So we can do something like uh, 32 or you can see the number changing down there. Sometimes it's hard to land on the exact number you want. Then these green ones, this is the, this subdivision here. Let's go with like a six maybe. <clears throat> um, Let's try an eight. Yeah, I like eight better. Okay, then um, this is like the radius, like the inner radius, and this is the outer radius. But it, this is, uh, well, you can see what it's doing. It's going kind of from thick to thin, and that's not what we want. Okay, and then if you want it to twist, you can do that as well, but we don't, we don't want twist on this specific one. <clears throat> can you help me with an IMM problem? I can try. Sure, I, I can try, let's see, let's see, let's hear it. Okay, so now we have our ring. We can shrink it down, unhide this. And continue to scale it down and kind of put it in place. <clears throat> Now this earring kind of goes from thick to thin, so we can try and get it to do that. Okay, so we can just get the inflate. I purchased an INMM brush from ArtStation when I opened the brush in ZBrush. The thumbnail shows up with a 22 in the top stating it should have 22 models within okay yes when you press m nothing shows up you can only place a sphere so have you been able to use any um insert multi-mesh brushes so here's an IMM brush down here. This is mine. And when you push, when you load the brush, do you see all of them up here? Um, that's your first, that's the first inclination if it's working is if, if you see everything up here. So if you, if you hit B and then you hit I, all of these are insert multi-mesh brushes. So if I hit one of these, you'll see them all show up here. So when you load in that insert multi-mesh brush, um, you should be able to load it through here, like load brush, okay? And then you go grab it, and then you load it in. And when once you do, it should show up like this. And you have to be on a mesh that does not have subdivision levels. It has to, um, has to have, but you should still see the list of uh, objects up top. So try, try opening a blank scene, like with nothing in it, just blank. And then this guy looks like uh, Billy Idol. <laughs> okay, so you should open a blank scene with nothing in it, like a blank project. So um, if you go to project, open any of these default projects, like this uh, anime head or something like that, open that up, and then open up your brush, and then see if, uh, all of the objects show up up here. If they don't, that's where I am stumped. If it's not showing up up there, and I'm talking about not just the brush that you purchased, but 
just the brushes that ship with ZBrush to see if they show up up here. So um, kind of some kind of work in reverse, starting with blank scene, loading in a base IMM brush and see if you can see them. And then try drawing on the surface with one of these. Insert multi-mesh brushes and see if it works. That's a nice look, right? <laughs> What's up, pipehead? So that's that's what, how I would approach it. And if that still doesn't work, um, that's a problem with your ZBrush install or or something like that. I'll, you know, insert multi-mesh brushes are, are just a collection of objects. So they should, in theory, work with any, any version of ZBrush. It doesn't matter if it's old or new because they're just objects. It's, it's not really uh, tied to any one version of ZBrush. The standard ones work. Okay. So I would reach out to the... Um, so... Try, try the one you purchased inside of a blank scene, not, not inside the scene that's having issues and see if it works there. If it doesn't work there, if you're not seeing any of the, uh, any of the, the things, make sure it's, you're not trying to open it from within a zip file. Make sure it's unzipped and out of there or else it's not gonna work. Um, and then if not, if it still doesn't work, I would reach out to the creator and tell them your, your problem, your issue, because maybe it was saved improperly or something. Okay, <clears throat> now that we have this earring, let's fill it full of a color. Um, hey, how's it going? Okay, so maybe just a copper color like that. that it's kind of a skin color isn't it let's tweak it a little bit you find that every 2d drawing can somehow be translated into a 3d sculpt or some not possible well that's a tough question <laughs> there i would say almost every drawing can be interpreted interpreted in some way into 3d um but sometimes the concept artist will cheat and draw something that's not quite possible in 3d like say I mean, the low hanging fruit would be like an MC Escher, you know, drawing or something like that. So that's just impossible to do. But sometimes there are perspective things that just aren't possible. So what you have to do at that point as a 3D artist is try and, and match the feel of the piece rather than what it looks like exactly. So um, it's just like, yeah, you're just going for the feel of it. What, what is your, the, the closest you can get with the look without, without it uh, not working. So for, for example, you can see his ears kind of sticking out right here. And it's not, the version I have is not really the same based off where the ear is. I would have to like break symmetry and mess with this ear to make it look like that. So, you know, there's, there's certain things that you have to take liberties on, on doing. Okay. Uh, what way you suggest for anatomy study? I would suggest uh, checking out Proko.com. My good friend Stan Proko over there. Um, and he teaches anatomy through figure drawing, but he teaches it in a way that's entertaining and light. And it's, yeah, it's just really, really good. And I don't have symmetry turned on for some reason. Uh, make sure we have symmetry. Okay. And it's on. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Neil. Yeah, I mentioned this because Jimmy brought up Ronald Cyril and much of his characters rely on the ink medium. Yeah, the medium really doesn't matter. It's it's more about perspective and, and form and if you can actually translate it. So uh, one designer that I particularly have a hard time with is like um, 
Steven Silver's stuff. So Steven, Steven Silver, he he designed Kim Possible and I think um, Fairly Odd Parents. You know that look? Uh, the It's very, very flat and graphic. And a lot of times um, part of that design is like taking a soup can and the top has perspective and the bottom of the can is just a straight line. It doesn't, it's not even perspective. So you kind of have to take that with a grain of salt and, um, you know, just kind of interpret it a little bit based on reality and a little bit based on the design and see if you can make it look and feel like the concept rather than um, be a one-to-one. -one. If you're new to 3D modeling, what's a good start to model? Um, I would, well, that's a good question, but let's see, how can I best answer this? Um, I would just practice sculpting in general. And then just, you know, just try, try practicing sculpting and you'll just get better and better. But as far as what to sculpt, um, oh, geez. I'm try I have some specific classes in my course that I teach online that are specific for beginners to follow along with. Um, but I'm trying to think of what you could find if you're not, if you're just kind of looking. Um, and what I, what, one of my challenges in my uh, student forum is a Saturday morning cartoon challenge. So I have them go out and look, look for Saturday morning cartoons and try and block out those, some of those easier characters. That's a way you could go. Something like that. I do have a course. It's called the 3D Character Workshop. It's right above me right here. Yep, like Peter Donner said. <laughs> Peter's one of my students. Hey, Peter. Again, thank you so much. And I, I teach from beginners all the way up to advanced students. So you can check that out. Um, also, I give away these brushes and this user interface for free. If you want to check it out, too. Okay, let's move on to this hair. <clears throat> hey, Ori. Uh, for eyelids, I see a lot of people use two half spheres to create them, and some are just sculpting over the eye. Which method do you recommend? For me, it's more comfortable two half spheres. Uh, it's it, There's no right or wrong way. Sometimes I'll use half spheres. Sometimes I'll just build up the eyelids. Um, and sometimes I'll just forget to put eyelids in there, so I'll, I'll be forced to build up the eyelids that way. So um, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a way to do it. Where can you follow me? Where can I find you? Um, so you can follow me. I mean, I have social, uh, social media stuff. I just don't, I haven't been posting too much over there. I'm, I'm wanting to ramp up my YouTube channel, which is just uh, Shane Olson over on YouTube. And I'm Shane Olson Art on Twitch. And... Uh, you can look for a three D character workshop on Instagram. Um, yeah, just different places. I I need to. I'm really going to be focusing on YouTube though, and I have two YouTube channels. I have the three D character workshop and my name, but I think I'm going to be po posting videos on the channel that's named after my name because more people search for my name than my uh, product. So yeah. So if you can find me over there. Okay, and then on ArtStation, I'm just Shane Olson overnight on ArtStation. You can see some of my work over there. Then also, uh, this is uh, Pixelogic's channel. So Pixelogic, this is ZBrush Live. Like, I don't know if you can see this shirt. ZBrush Live, um, you can find my information if you search in Google for ZBrush Live, and you can also see information on other sculptors that sculpt for ZBrush Live. <clears throat> okay, let's work on this hair. All right, I think this hair is a bit too low poly to work with. Um, and I was thinking about doing this hair two different ways. I can either recreate it just by drawing the topology on top of this uh, object that I've already made. Um, that's, that's probably what I would have done if before there was live Boolean, but I kind of want to try live Boolean and see how that goes. Hey, how's it going, Topic? How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Okay. So 
let's see. I want to try and just create a piece that I can use to notch these uh, pieces out of the shape. Because I really want to maintain the shape right here. Okay. <clears throat> so, if I clear off these creases, oh, I didn't mean to say, <laughs> I did the opposite of clearing them off, uncrease all. And then I hit subdivide. You can see how soft it gets, which isn't, it's not bad. I do want it to taper as it goes up. So with symmetry turned on, I can mask this, invert the mask, and then I can kind of tilt top inward. So it's, it's more like a razor's edge here. And I want to do the same with the back half. Let's see, Let's see if I can turn the camera a little bit more. There we go. That works. Okay, happy with that. All right, so now what we can do is clear that mask out and then just start using parts to, to slice out of other parts, which is really, it's really great that Live Boolean works so well for that and I'll show you how to do it. So I'm gonna use a topology brush and just kind of cut out this first piece right here, which is essentially just a triangle. So I'm just gonna make a triangle like this. It's gonna make two because I have mirroring turned on, I think I might turn mirroring off for a second. And when I tap on the surface, it's going to make a new surface. And now I want to split this surface off of the, the other one. So I'm going to go split unmask points, arrow key down, and here we have it. But since I created it on the surface of that object, it's actually going to put it, it's not going to be in aligned with the world. So you can see this is the center of the world right here. And this piece is offset. So I'm going to slide it over here. Okay, so this is my new piece. I'm going to turn off dynamic subdivisions here for a second. <clears throat> hey, Jorge. Good. Doing good, thanks. Okay, now I can uh, do a mirror and weld, and that will fix the symmetry, any symmetry issues. Okay, and now I have this piece. And I want to um, kind of start to arc it a little bit and, and follow the shape of this Mohawk more. So I can use my, um, I can, I can, turn off creases and then I can use the Z modeler to insert edges. I can't do it if it's masked. Okay, let's go insert edge loops. Okay, so it inserts an edge loop here. And I can also center and reset this gizmo so I can scale it out from the center. Now, what I want to do is I'm actually going to put the Mohawk all the way at the bottom of, of bottom of my subtool list. Um, very, very bottom. And then this above that. Well, actually, we'll, we'll put it below. Let's see. And then um, during live Boolean operations, I like to use folders for this uh, just because it will kind of an encapsulate or contain my Boolean operations. So you can just hit control F as in Frank to make a folder. And we can just name this uh, Mohawk. Okay, and then we can put this piece into this folder. Okay, now for this one, um, I can turn on live Boolean like this. And then I can hit this button right here that means subtract, okay? And when I turn that on, you'll notice that it is subtracting, but since I have wireframe turned on, it's going to allow us to see that shape. So I'm going to hit Shift F to turn it off. And you can see how Live Boolean is chopping it out like this, right? Um, but it also takes on whatever color that piece was or whatever poly paint it was filled with. So I'm going to grab this color and fill it. So it'll be the same color. 
There we go. Okay, now we can move, I can turn the wireframe back on so we can see our object, right? And we can use masking and moving and just start to manipulate this piece. And what I really lo love about Live Boolean is it's live, right? It's, I'm not trying to um, model this as if I was box modeling like in Maya or Max or something like that. Um, it's just really powerful because I can move these shapes around um, live and it will cut it. We'll just cut it out live. Okay, so there's one thing I want to get, which is that swoop kind of coming in from here. And that's why I added that, that new cut. But if I hit, um, if I turn on sub, uh, dynamic subdivisions, you can see it crunches it way too much. So I need to insert some support loops. So what are support loops? Support loops are just to help us um, get just keep an edge so it's not going to collapse on itself. Okay, so I'm going to turn on uh, symmetry again, turn on the Z modeler. I'm going to insert some support loops right here. Now if I turn on subdivision surface, you can see that it collapses, but not as much. And it maintains this these uh, creased edges a little bit better. And then I see how this edge down here is rounding off. I don't want it to be that round. Um, I want it to be pointier. So I'm gonna need to do a support loop down here. So what we can do is bring one in here on this side, and then bring one in here on this side. So it kind of makes a little box. Okay, so now when I hit D, you can see it maintains its sharpness, right? Pretty cool. And I can also, if I want to, even though it's not in the hair at all, it's not affecting the hair, I can add one more support loop up here it's going to, and this is just kind of traditional hard surface sculpting techniques. Um, it's not anything new, but it, it helps a lot. Okay, so now I can go to mask lasso and just mask out this piece. And now I can bend it, get that bend that I'm looking for. <clears throat> Why edge and not crease? Uh, because Creasing is harder to control, whereas uh, an actual edge loop is much, much easier to control. I can control how sharp that edge is by how close the um, support loop is to the edge. I can move it and pull it apart. Here, I'll, I'll just give you, a little, give you a little demo really quick. So here's, we'll start with my ruler file. This ruler comes with my user interface, by the way, if you're interested. Um, it helps with uh, 3D printing and scaling of your characters. So I'm going to grab this sphere and we'll replace it with a box. And this is another tip. Um, as long as your gizmo is showing, if you hit an insert multi mesh brush, like this cube, for example, it's going to replace whatever geometry you have selected with whatever insert multi mesh brush you selected. And it only works if the gizmo is showing. So Bear that in mind. Okay, so now we have this cube. Okay, and then I'm gonna duplicate this cube. So this cube is creased, right? Um, so now I have two cubes, and I'm gonna show you the difference between a creased cube and one with uh, support loops, okay? So I have these creases. If I hit, turn on dynamic subdivisions, you'll see it doesn't really change much. It's very, very crispy, okay? So with this, with this um, other edge loop, or this other cube, I'm going to uncrease all. So I'll take all the creases off, and you'll see it turns into a sphere because the creases are no longer maintaining the, the edges, okay? So if I turn off dynamic, and we start adding support loops like this. Here, let's do uh, symmetrical. Should have symmetry turned on. I don't know why it's not inserting them symmetrically. Let me do a mirror and weld just to make sure what's going on. Mirror and weld will cut it in half and give me an insert loop into the center. But I should be able to insert. There we go. That's working now. All right. And now I can do an, uh, an edge here, an edge here. So I'll do three of them like this around this top edge. Okay, now if I turn it on, turn on uh, dynamic, you'll see the different edges that it's gonna give us. 
So you'll see that this one's pretty sharp up here. And this one's not, it's, it's sharp around this corner and it's giving us this nice corner, but it's not uh, sharp here because we didn't put extra edge loops, support loops around this edge, right? So what I mean by control is I can now slide this edge. See, I can hit slide edge loop complete and I can slide these edges away from this leading edge. Okay, so we'll just slide these away. So we can make a box like this and I'll hit D and look how soft this edge crease is now. Okay, that's what I mean by control. It's much easier to control how soft or how crispy that edge work is. And here, down here, this, this, this cube is super sharp. Um, I can kind of get the same thing using edges down here, but there's no visual feedback as far as how, how uh, tight or loose your creased edges are. Okay, so what I mean is if you go down to this edge loop here, and you can see it has, um, let's see, not edge loop, crease. You go to crease, and you can see this crease level. It's set to three. It's set to three uh, by default for if you're using my user interface. Usually it's set to 15, which is crazy high, but um, I'm gonna clear off these, all of these creases here. Okay, uncrease all. Okay, and now I'm gonna crease, turn the crease level to two. And what that means is it's gonna maintain the crease until subdivision level two, and then it will let go of it and just uh, subdivide after that on top of that crease. It's kind of hard to understand unless you see it. But I'm gonna do a crease all with this new setting, okay? So like I said, you can't tell that these creased edges are a two now instead of a three, okay? But if I start to subdivide, like if I, um, if I actually add subdivision levels, I'm gonna turn this off and just hit Control D once, twice, and the third time, see, the third time it let go of that crease, okay? So you can see how it's starting to sort of look like the one above it because it maintained that crease for the first one, the second one, and then let it go, okay? But it's only working with real subdivision levels. But the difference is this is a destructive workflow, right? So meaning um, once, I add sub, once I add subdivision levels, it's kind of hard to go back and use dynamic subdivisions uh, when you want creases like this. That's why support loops are a, a bit of a better option when it comes to that, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> but that's, uh, it's not really anything new. It's a, it's a tried and true hard surface um, modeling trick. I wouldn't call it a trick. It's just kind of a, how you do it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so now I can just continue moving this. We can unhide our, our concepts and uh, there we go. And we can now duplicate this entire object and just, you know, move on with the next cut. And just kind of create that, that next kind of hair right there. Am I using a Wacom Cintiq? Yes, I am. This is a Wacom Cintiq um, 27 inch. Okay, so here's another, I'm full of tips today. <laughs> here's another tip. Um, I'm trying to, I wanna mask out this end, this tip right here. And if I try and hold down control to mask and start here, it's not gonna let me, it's gonna use the gizmo and, and... so what I wanna do is turn that gizmo off and then hold down control. And if I, if I tap Alt with control, what it's gonna do is it's gonna mask everything except for the thing I want, right? Now I can adjust this like this. Yeah, I, I really, really like the Cintiq. One thing um, I, I want to clarify though is, here let me, 
do an auto groups just to put these in different groups so I can control select one of these and duplicate it. Um, what I want to say as far as um, Cintiqs go is you don't need a Cintiq to be a good artist. You just need a tablet that has pen pressure of some sort. Okay. Um, that's, that's it. So don't feel like you need to go invest a ton of money into a, uh, a monitor that you can draw on. Okay. Um, a tablet works just fine. Just fine. And like I said, it won't make you a better artist. It will just increase your speed in my opinion. And some people don't even like Cintiqs because your hand is in the way, right? Your hand is in the way of what you're doing. So like uh, my buddy, Danny Williams, he's, he's playing with the idea of going back to a tablet for that reason. And I know, I, I think uh, Dylan Ekron still uses a tablet and um, some people, they were just kind of raised on tablets you know they were they were shaped by them whatever you want to call it so i i used a tablet for the majority of my career i've only semi recently gotten into cintiq and um when i worked at disney and i liked it because like i said it sped up my my workflow and the reason why it sped up my workflow is because i only really do this have to do the stroke once because it's a one-to-one, -one, right? My pen is on the screen. So with a tablet, there's an offset. There's a disconnection a little bit. So um, sometimes the stroke you're doing on your tablet isn't quite lining up with the stroke you're doing on your screen because of the, the pixel ratios and things like that. It's not quite exact. Um, so it's not, like I said, it's not going to make you a better artist. It's going to speed up your workflow. In my opinion, anyway. I'll just throw that out there. In my opinion. <laughs> okay. So, your Cintiq, the hand was annoying and also your neck posture was worse. You know, I've, I've, I, I feel you. I, it's, my back's been tingling a little bit and I think a lot of it's because of my posture over the Cintiq. Um, and also it takes up a lot of desk space. That's the thing um, that I'm not a fan of is how much desk space it takes up. And I have to have, I have a monitor above my Cintiq. That's what I, I'm looking at with my chat and my reference and that kind of stuff. And um, the, so it, it's, it's higher than a monitor should be. And I feel kind of my, my, my neck, um, you know, getting a little, uh, getting a little, I don't know, fatigued, I guess is the word. How do you view the Boolean cutting object? So if you have, um, like I said before, if you have wireframe turned on, you can actually see your Boolean shapes. And if you turn wireframe off, you'll see the result. So here's the result of the Mohawk so far. You can see that it being cut out like this. <clears throat> Serious question for an absolute beginner. Is one of those $40 XP pen star whatever okay to literally just begin to understand how it all works? I know it's probably a laugh at such a low price. No, no. All you need is, like I said, a tablet with pressure sensitivity. That's it. Um, just don't sculpt with a mouse because I've talked about this almost every single stream I've done is a mouse is a single click. Either it's on or it's off. There's no pressure sensitivity. So when you're doing a uh, fine level sculpting and you're trying to be very, very light with your sculpting, you're gonna have to go and adjust sensitivity or intensity up here a lot rather than using the pressure of your, of your pen, right? So like I, I equate it to having a gas pedal in your car, instead of a gas pedal, you have a toggle switch, right? So it's either on or it's off. That's how sculpting with a mouse is. Either it's on or it's off, there's no in between. So that's why I highly recommend getting some sort of tablet with some pressure sensitivity, and it doesn't have to be a Cintiq. So, yep, <laughs> Neil's like, foot to the floor sculpting, just like on or off. Okay, one more shape, and I think we'll be done. Just one more little piece back here.
Yeah, I it it really is uh and the reason I'm so adamant about that is because I just don't want beginners to think they have to invest all this money just to get started. That's not that's not true. You don't have to invest a bunch of money. You can get into this at, at fairly low cost. Okay, I'm turning off symmetry and centering my gizmo in here because I want to scale this down small. Not that small. But I want to maintain the width of it. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I used a we I used an Intuos for years and years. I th I had one of those old ones that was kind of a cream colored, like a Wacom tablet before Cintiqs, before Intuos. There was just the the kind of creamy Apple two E colored tablet, and that was it. That's that's what I used. It worked just fine for a long time. And if you want to move some, if you want to move, yeah, like beige, yeah, like tan beige. If you want to move um, your selection, say you didn't. Well, for example, say your selection is like this, but you wanted to include it. You wanted to include that little tip that you missed. All you have to do is while you're holding down control, add space bar to the mix, and then you can move your selection around the screen and then let go. What's a really good tablet to buy? Um, the best one you can afford is always my answer to that one. And there's something to be said also about uh, tablet size because um, bigger isn't always better when it comes to tablet size because you have, you have desk real estate and you also have your one-to-one -one ratio when it comes to your screen versus your tablet. And um, I find it best when you have a screen that has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and then you get a tablet. My favorite is the medium size, not the large one, but the medium one, not the small one, right? Uh, the medium one because the ratio between your screen and the tablet is much, much closer between the two. If you get the small one, a little tiny stroke is going to go really far across the across the. The screen and if you have a large one now you're using your whole arm to make large strokes if that makes sense and um it's nice but it's it just takes up a lot of real estate and that kind of stuff so all right yeah bamboo works great you don't need something crazy expensive Yeah, ZBrush Mini Core is great. Okay, so there we go. Save this out. <clears throat> and one more thing, I just want to kind of make this, uh, this, this, whatever he's got on. He's like a cloak or something. Hey, what's up, Daniel? How are you doing, man? Yeah, you're with me on that? That's good to hear. But I'm not just like making stuff up, right? <laughs> so Daniel is another uh, streamer on here. How, how's that been going, Daniel? Have you been enjoying it? I missed you this year. I always see, I always see Daniel at conventions. Um, yeah, fantastic, fantastic sculptor. And uh, yeah, so you've been working on, I don't, I've, are you done with the, I, I saw you were working on that Lion King-ish sculpt for a while there. <clears throat> um, I had the mouth gash in there, but I removed it because I wanted to work symmetrically and then I'll put it back in. Things like that you want to save until the very, very end. 
so you can work symmetrically as long as possible. I know this here has been crazy, right? So weird. Okay, let's split this off. <laughs> Thanks, Kaiser. My interest medium is great. My screen is 22 and it feels very natural. Bam. There you go, Pat. Endorsal, endorsement <laughs> for the ideas that I'm putting down. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to kind of make this uh, just a weird cloak shape. I'm trying to decide if I want to do a, a Taurus and if I want to do some... Um, do some cloth stuff or not? And decide. <laughs> it looks like a a guy sticking his head out of a donut. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> wide wedding. <laughs> Oh goodness. I loved him in the wedding singer. <laughs> I did, did a pretty big cameo in the wedding singer. Pretty funny. Oh goodness. All right. Rebel yell. Mufasa's almost done, but have multiple projects going on. Like everybody, right? Currently been streaming work on Cupid and Psych sequel sculpture and then and the shield from the boy and the last guardian. Oh, awesome. Almost done with both. So Daniel's done this really, really cool sculpt with from the last guardian and the actual uh, creature from it. And he's designed the the fur. So he's printed it out in 3D and he um, oriented. Is that a word? oriented it in in the printing bed so it didn't really uh, necessarily need supports is is that right am i because if you were going to put supports on all that on those uh, loose fur bits it it would just it'd be a clipping nightmare right so um to build it up is just genius and it turned out awesome and he's got this cool light inside of it do you have a picture of that daniel i mean feel feel free to post a link to show people it's super cool I'll let you pimp your stuff on here, man. <laughs> so you're sculpting the boy and the shield from it. That's cool. Can't wait to see that. Oh, you found it? Oh, you found the link to his stream. Okay, awesome. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is just delete the bottom section of this. <clears throat> yeah, feathers. Feathers. Fe I said hair, didn't I? Lots of feathers. Still a lot of supports, but it turned out amazing. <laughs> There you go. Thanks. Is this not? Yes. Why didn't it work? Auto groups. There we go. Okay. Am I going to use dynamic for the t-shirt? Um, I, I might, but what I'm doing is just kind of, I'm experimenting at this point. I'm just trying to give me a base for the, for the cloth here. I'm kind of picturing him like a, a, a Mad Max type character with like a, for lack of a better term, like a shawl or a cloak on. And then I'll build up the cloth 
around like with my cloth brush <clears throat> asymmetrically. So I want to Z remesh this. See what we get. It could be a hoodie. I mean, it could be anything, right? But that's kind of what I'm, I'm, since he's like this punk guy, a punk dude in a hoodie, I guess would work. But I'm, I'm thinking more of a, like I said, a, like a cloak or a, like just, just something he found that he cut a hole in and put on him. <laughs> Is a Q&A week for, for the 3D character workshop? Yes. This week. Yep. Yep, or a cape. Um, I I have both. Kind of reminds you of Junkrat from Overwatch. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. It's funny you say that because when I play Overwatch, I play Junkrat. I, I was actually lucky to have, lucky enough to have the opportunity to do an Overwatch skin. I did, uh, I did a skin for Zenyatta, the baseball skin. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, when I play, I usually play Junkrat. He's, he's so much fun. Okay, let's grab this cloth brush. And we're going to turn off symmetry. I just kind of want to build it up. What features can you push while sculpting to give off give off a happier vibe? Um, well, are you talking about like the to make the character happy? Um, like like smile? Like is that what you're talking about? Like what what you can do to make it smile? So smiles are interesting because it's basically the the top lip is straight. A lot of people will curve it like a, the yellow smiley face, right? And make it a big, huge curve like that. But use reference and look at people that are smiling in real life. It basically is their top lip is almost straight across and their bottom lip is in a smile, right? And then you make sure you pull the, the sides of your mouth back around the teeth, not out into outer space and up like a, you know, like a yellow smile guy like that. And then also put, um, when a lot of people smile, their lower eyelids will go up into their eyes. Like, you know, like when they're smiling. That was a horrible smile I just did. But um, yeah, just pay attention to that. Use reference. And it's usually, uh, will give you good results that way. Am I a PC or console gamer? I'm actually both. It depends on what it is. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. Characters always have great flow and seem to effort, effortlessly made. <laughs> I'm sure there's a ton of experience behind that visual flow you naturally produce. Uh, yeah, that's uh, I, I really appreciate that. It means a lot coming from you. Um, yeah, it's like I always tell people when they say that only took you two hours to make, and I always say, yeah, two hours and twenty two years. You know. <laughs> Um, I did an Overwatch skin. I'll, I'll pull it up really quick. <clears throat> I use ZBrush to do the high resolution stuff on it. Uh, da, 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 da. So here is my here's my art station. I need to update it really, really bad. I have so many more characters than this that I need to put up here. But I did this in Yada Skin for a freelance job for Blizzard. I really want to do more. I've just been so, so tied down with my course the last year. Um, but yeah, that was that was amazing. Fantastic team over at Blizzard that works on that. How do you scope for animation? That is a that is a giant question 
but I can answer it in a at a very high level. And uh, basically, you have to retopologize your final sculpt. What I'm doing here is I'm sculpting in very high resolution, which is not very. It doesn't really work that well for animation at all. Um, so you have to end up end up retopologizing it. And what's nice about ZBrush and working this way is it frees you from having to worry about topology until the very end. <clears throat> the eyes are sculpted or painted. Looks like anime figure style, very shaped. Are you talking, Jorge, are you talking about the one I'm, I'm working on now or the Zenyatta skin or which one? Hey, what's up, Sculptor? How's it going? Now this is, yeah, I'm paying too much attention to chat and not enough attention to my sculpt here. <laughs> Making him pull this down more. This one I'm sculpting. Um, so this is just a couple of spheres. It's here, I'll just show it to you. So there's these two spheres inside of his head. And then there's just little pupils floating on the front. And then the eye opening around around that show his his eyes. Hey, what's up, Chris? How's it going? All right, I'm gonna, not gonna spend too much longer on this guy. I'm gonna do, yeah, somebody requested a little beard, a little fiber mesh beard. <laughs> Am I a hard, hardcore gamer that won't let my grandchildren play? Well, I only have one grandchild and he is two, two? And um, he doesn't play games yet, but I have, I have several kids and they all play. <laughs> Um, good shapes on the eyes. Thank you. How do you deal with eyelids for animation? Uh, I just, you just circle them with topology and make sure you have enough, uh, geometry to allow them to close without stretching or stretching the, the vertices out. It's not the, this is not the best cloak ever, <clears throat> but I just wanted to get one in there. Let's grab this color. It's like a brownish. <laughs> All right, just because I don't want to spend too much longer on this guy, um, his mohawk needs to be further down his forehead. I can see there's a lot of stuff I still need to do. Oh, looks like I didn't have symmetry turned on when I did that. Yep, I need to adjust that mohawk so it's like out here more. And then adjust these shapes. Something like that, I don't know. <laughs> crazy i love this guy all right oh were you streaming today okay let's do some beard some beardy action let's save it first man this might be the first stream where i have to take a little break in my 100 plus streams i've ever done <laughs> I can, I can wait 45 minutes, I think. How do you create a mouth that can be opened without messing up your sculpt? Is that done in ZBrush or just during retopo? What I'll usually do, Steve, is I'll open it up slightly so I can retop a little ring around the inside of the mouth. 
um, then I'll I retop it that way. So then later on I can close it back up. Sometimes I'll just leave it open. Hey, what's up, David? And um, I'll leave it open so when the rigging department rigs it, they're not having to deal with overlapping lips when they're trying to do the skin weights. <clears throat> See, we can turn on perspective. All right. Okay, let's do. Uh, let's give this guy some some hair. Whoops. Let's do the pen glass, the pen masking pen. So basically, how fiber mesh works. I I rarely do fiber mesh anymore because it doesn't really work in games and it doesn't really work for three D printing unless you make it thick enough, right? So we'll try and see what we can get away with here. I'll crawl it a little bit higher up the side and the back. Eh, something like that. Okay. Uh, is it possible to wrap a tattoo image onto bare body with the help of the new fabric conformity capability? I've been struggling with the Spotify tools. I had to always rotate the OBJ multiple angles to stitch and paint project the image and still end up with less than 100% accuracy. Um, I have done it the way you describe it, and it's a pain in the butt, right? Um, <laughs> I, <coughs> excuse me, I was, uh, for a freelance gig, I did, um, I did a series of collectibles for Slayer, like the rock band Slayer. Let me see if I can find it. Um, but the short answer is, um, I have not tried that new technique yet, but I would like to, I, I don't know if it's possible. Um, and so I can't. I can't really answer that question without have try, tried it myself. I want to try that. But, um, okay. So, yeah, these figures right here. I, I did all three of these for, uh, for Knuckle Bones. And um, I would reach out to, like, Paul Gabry during his, during his live stream or Joseph Dress live stream and ask them. Or uh, Michael Pavlovich. Those three people would know would know well as far as that goes but like the tattoos on this guy right here the i did those exactly how you were describing using the um the the spotlight and trying to like inch inch it around and line it up and a lot of hand painting and it was not fun it was not fun um but it it, it worked out in the end so yeah this was this was uh something from my my freelance days. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> but I feel your pain is what I'm trying to say. But I, I wish I had the answer. I don't have the answer. Okay, fiber mesh. There's the new, um, oh, it's, they actually, uh, Pixelogic used my Kate character to show how to change colors in the, uh, in the UV unwrap stage, you can paint on the unwrapped UVs, and I believe you could do it in there and then wrap it back around your object. I just, I, I don't have experience with it yet, so I don't know that I can, I can't speak to it. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on, there we go. Perfect, done, ship it. Um, okay, so if I don't use fiber mesh for your game dev, what do you use for hair that can wind up? Un um, so in Unreal, if I'm doing it in Unreal, what I usually do is I will do hair cards, which is just a bunch of polygons with alpha mapped hair texture on top of those those alpha maps. So um, yeah, you did try UVs. Yeah, yeah. So um, ah, dude, I wish I had the answer. I wish I had experience so I could just say, yeah, just do this. Uh, apologize for that but um anyway i will either use um hair cards or i will use uh thick geometry like geometry that's actually modeled so since this guy has like very few hair hair whiskers i could get away with just modeling each one individually very low resolution and um i could 3d print it and i could use it in a game mesh if i if i kept it low enough right um 
But for this, I'm just going to use fiber mesh because it's a lot of, it's, it's fun. I don't get to use fiber mesh enough. And I mean, just look at it just in general, it's pretty fun. And then you can just start modifying it. Um, so you can start doing like uh, coverage, start reducing coverage and start doing max, reducing max fibers. So it's very, very small. And then as far as the length goes, you can crank that down. So it's just, and if this mask is getting in your way, uh, you can go to masking down here and click on view mask to turn it off. Okay, um, and then let's see, three segments, profile one. I'm trying, it's been a while, so I'm trying to remember how to, how to do the thickness part of it. Or you can scale up the root. There we go, and scale up the tips. And let's see, I want to reduce the length a little bit more. So the coverage. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. You can do so you could actually do hair cards with this with fiber mesh um, using just a single segment. But this isn't working out. Let me see. Save. Um, for me personally, Sean, I've only used it for um for just rendering. I haven't used it for in-game or anything like that. Gosh, I'm trying to remember. You guys remember how to add thickness to these? Sometimes what I'll do is I'll start with one inside of uh, the spotlight. So you can go to um, the fiber mesh, wherever it is. Oh, fibers right here. So you can start with fibers that already have thickness on to them. Um, like this one. Oh my goodness. You can just try some different ones. Like weeds. <laughs> just grow some weeds on his face. Film strips. You can, but you, you can get an idea of all the different ways you can use it, right? Look at this. That's crazy. <laughs> A width profile. Okay, thank you. Oh, look at these. This is pretty close. <clears throat> Let's see. This one might... Might do it. <laughs> oh, thanks, Daniel. Yeah, width profile. Okay. So, let's see. Oh, this guy right here? Are you talking about this one? see that noise so I only see width profile here <clears throat> oh I see they just they just do the tips the profile slider at the bottom not coverage this is coverage I'm, I know I'm I'm totally missing you guys are like yelling at the screen it's right there so there's length profile. Why am I not seeing it? What is this texture? I don't want this texture. There we go. I'm going to just adjust the length here. Getting closer. Getting closer to what I want. I'm gonna reduce the gravity on it. There we go, so it sticks out a little bit more. This actually isn't too far off of what I'm thinking about.
It's coverage. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Okay. Look at that. Those are pretty thick though. So maybe something like this. Gravity profile. Crank that up. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I'm messing everything up. Gosh dang it. I keep wanting to zoom this thing out. There we go. I just want it straight. <clears throat> okay. Below the texture panel. Oh, this profile right here. Oh, got you. Okay, there it goes. Uh, there, that's it. Okay, so now it's got three sides. You can see it's shaped like a triangle. Okay, there we go. Thank you, guys. Now, now these are little squares. Look at them. <laughs> so let's reduce the coverage. I was laughing. Not coverage. Ugh. Let's get this note. I want to reduce the max fibers. So there's just a few. Looks like Shaggy from Scooby Doo. <laughs> hey, Scoob. <laughs> you were right. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, right, Michael. Just went from. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, school. I can't do it. I can't do Shaggy. <laughs> I can if I listen to him and then I do it like right after, but I can't just pulling it out of my hat. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Let's do, I just want to do max fibers point one five maybe. I think it still has too much gravity going on. Gravity. <laughs> I want him to point down, but not hang down, you know? I don't know. <laughs> you can do texture variations too, which will squiggle them all up. Okay, so what I can do too is I can say, okay, this is good enough, and then I can comb them down too. So if I like this, I can just say accept, and then it will keep them. And I don't know what's going on on the inside here, but it looks like there's two sets. Oh, it looks like um, there must be an internal set and an external set. Like it grew, it grew from the inside in inside. It, yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, Hopper Sean, there's a new challenge for my students inside the forum. You can check it out. Just go to the student challenge category. Okay, so let's do auto groups. Man, this is a mess. All right. <laughs> Play the Scooby-Doo theme. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to quickly, yeah, quickly, quickly in quotes, just hide a bunch of these. Oh, come on. All the internal ones. Okay. Sometimes you just got to do some stuff by hand. So I guess I am going to be working on this guy the whole stream. I was hoping to start a new one. Now that I have, what, 234 people here, it's interesting. It's not as much as high as it usually is but hi nonetheless, which is great. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. Um, I wanted to show you guys some of the options and maybe take a vote on what, which ones I sculpt next, which one I sculpt next. Because I want to sculpt another one, uh, either a Halloween one again, or one from another one from Josh, that Josh Black page that I've been doing. Okay, so we got all these hidden. I can do uh, delete hidden.
Hey, Paul, what's going on, man? Make sure double-sided isn't on when you accept the fiber mesh. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, Paul DC graces us with his presence. So if you guys don't know who Paul is, Paul is yet another, it's like the band's back together. So Paul is yet another uh, streamer here. Um, <clears throat> you want me to do a, a, a Halloween one? I could do that. Anyway, check out Paul, follow Paul, follow Daniel. Awesome sculptors. So that's why it did it did the fiber mesh on the inside. No wonder. Ah, silly, silly, silly. Okay, let's do uh, groom hair short. Let me see if this works. Oh, that's so intense. Oh, I'm not complaining at all. I'm just saying. Um, usually there's more, and uh, yeah, I, I was I was it was more of a pointing it out than complaint. <laughs> Turn off topological. Let's just use move. There we go. <coughs> and then, what was I going to say? Oh, let me show you some of these. Okay, I have this guy. Awesome. Love, love this, this uh, design here. Really great shapes, really fun chin, and it's all tucked into this shirt and stuff. So this one's cool. Um, then there's this one. Now this one would be a challenge because it's concept directly from the side, so I don't have the the width information, what the width is going to look like. I only, I only have the depth from front to back. So I would essentially have to make up the rest, which is fine, you know. Um, but that being said, if you're a brand new sculptor and you want to uh, sculpt, you're looking for a concept to sculpt, don't choose a concept that's directly from the front or directly from the side because you won't have enough information and you'll end up being frustrated. So look for a concept that's three quarter view if you can. So um, the this is another one. And I think this is the full page here. So, so far I've sculpted uh, B, D, F, yeah, those, B, D, and F. This is the guy I'm working on right now. This, this whole page is fantastic, right? <clears throat> the girl, you like the girl? Yeah, she, she's super cute. It'd be fun to see if I could pull this off because her nose is very, very subtle and her lips are almost not there, which is, it, it can be difficult to get the appeal there without like full lips, you know? <clears throat> So, and then this one would be a challenge too, just because the, the cheek essentially goes right into the neck, which would be a really fun challenge to do. And then the, the hair shapes are very, very uh, two-dimensional. You love G? Yeah, the, the, I love that nose. And I would basically do the the lower mouth like a teacup. I would think of it like a teacup, right? That's the shape that it would take. And then the uh, another one in the top. You love G? <laughs> yeah, I, eventually I want to do all of them. I, I think C is probably the least appealing for me. And I don't know if it's just not fully realized or not. But um, yeah, this one's this one's probably the least my least favorite out of all of them. But yeah, good stuff. Okay. <clears throat> So this, these chin, the chin fiber meshes. Now this is probably still too many to, to do for a, like a 3D print or a game character. It would be too many. I would have to reduce the, I should have turned off how many segments were going down the length. Way too many segments here. You could do like one or two, maybe just one. So it looks like everybody wants me to to do the, the, the girl. Okay, like the A. A or G. Is that the consensus, A or G? Let's, let's look at it one more time. So A or G. I wish I could, can I do a poll in here? I don't think I can. <clears throat> I know Ashley does a poll. <laughs> Everybody's like, A. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay. So now that I've done this, this, this part is kind of bald in here. So I can just grab one of these, and just move it. Hey, George, how's it going? <laughs> you want G, huh? Okay. <laughs> a, a crossed with G, that'd be a nice one, huh? Oh, Bryce, yep, yep. I'm a big fan of Bryce's work. It's funny you say that because uh, Bryce and... Uh, I had I had dinner with uh, Paul Paul DC and Bryce Laville St. Martin is who we're talking about um, last Lightbox Expo. I'm sad that this year's Lightbox Expo was not live. Oh, last last year was uh, was fantastic. <clears throat> okay, one vote for E. All right. <clears throat> okay. probably uh use with editing this this cloth just a little bit more volumetric sculpted hair yeah i could do that you miss la <laughs> i don't right now with the uh with all the fire and the smoke and we're getting the smoke here in utah it's it's traveled two states over and it is horrible today that's i don't know if you can you can hear it in my voice but it's just it's hard to breathe and it's like uh it's like hong kong right now here <laughs> so much smoke and i do have a bit of a, a nose throat head cold thing happening right now thank you george Okay, I think we're going to save this off. And let me add his, uh, his little scar. Okay, I'm going to apply the dynamic subdivisions. <clears throat> and then switch brushes. not frozen what is going on there it goes it must have had a mask mask there oh the mask left over from the chin duh <laughs> it was terrible here is it terrible still to do cloth just I want to define that sternomastoid a little bit more I can continue to tweak this guy for 20 more minutes I think and I want to sharpen this edge so again what I can do <clears throat> is and even though this is be, if this is using um dynamic subdivisions i can still put an edge that's close to here to get uh a support edge let's do insert like this there we go Uh, it's a scar. It's like a cleft palette. Okay. It's like that kid on, uh, on, um, 
the the new Karate Kid Cobra Kai series. The the hawk guy with the big mohawk. He's got the scar. It's like that guy. In fact, I'm probably thinking that's where Josh got the idea for this. <laughs> All right. Take care. Thanks for hanging out. Let's do some more tweaking, make his nose a little thinner. <clears throat> and I want to get some kind of these, uh, 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 kind of uh, interlap or overlapping interlocking curves, like, like his nose is shaped like, not like that, like this. And his chin, I kind of want it to shape like this. So, let's see if we can mess with that a little bit more. There we go. He could be so many guys, right? That Tarkin from the Clone Wars Rebel show. Yep. That's a great show. All right. I'm still not a big fan of this cloth yet. <clears throat> this doesn't flow very well, so let's take out some of these whoop de doos. Warbles, as I call them. There we go. Need to taper it off more. <laughs> Steven, I choose the latter. <laughs> I'll make it, let's make it a little more black. How's that? More gray, less brown. <laughs> Michael, thank you. <laughs> it's not the first time I've heard that. I, I appreciate it. Love, love me some Bob Ross. Just a little, little friendly wrinkles over here. Friendly. <clears throat> Whoa. What in the world happened there? Did I crank the intensity up too high? Sometimes I mean to crank the intensity on my smooth brush and I end up cranking it on a different brush, which I don't mean to. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy graces us with his presence. This is like who's who of sculpting showing up today. We got Paul DC and Daniel and Jimmy. Thanks, guys, for hanging out. <clears throat> oh, Neil. Oh, goodness. All right. All right. I'll change the color. Fine. I'll change it. Jeez. Okay. No more. No more of that. <laughs> oh, you guys. 
like a head stuck in a pile of crap. <laughs> Jimmy is another fantastic sculptor, you guys. If you want to follow another stylized sculptor, he's he's one to follow. He and Paul DC. Yeah, great stuff. I, I'm, I need to look at reference for this. I, I'm not the best at cloth at all. What I'm trying to do is just kind of um, look at the silhouette. This, these are too even. too even yeah I'm just messing around with this hopefully it looks less like a pile of crap <laughs> that's the goal that was the goal there Nice, Paul. Yep, he's a good one. Paul, did you see his uh, the Robin Hood and Little John? So excellent. Uh, you know what? I could pro you know, I I could uh, do some micro mesh on this thing. That'd be that'd be fun. Let me save it. <clears throat> yeah, that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Robin Hood and Little John walking through the forest. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, oh, goodness. It's been too long since I've done this. <clears throat> it is under dynamic, I believe. Micro poly. Hope this doesn't crash. Okay, so this is this is part of the new update for ZBrush 2020, 2021, sorry, um, is, is this micro poly. And it works like micro mesh, where you can take a mesh like this, and it's basically going to replace each one of these squares with a mesh, which, uh, which is awesome. So I'm almost tempted to Z remesh this though. It's just so we get better work, better flow. I'm going to turn off mirroring and Z remesh this and see what we get. Okay, let's try this. It may give us some issues wherever it creates these poles. See, there's a pole here and a pole here. We'll see what happens. And so you want even density across everything if you can help it. Okay, <clears throat> so now let's pick, excuse me, let's pick a weave, pick this woven thing. Oh goodness, all right. Hopefully this doesn't shut my stream down. I'm turning off live Boolean because that's messing with it. There we go. Goodness sakes, okay. Let's change, I'm gonna change the color so you guys can actually see it. There we go, look at that. See, wherever there's poles, <clears throat> man, it makes you dizzy. Ugh. But wherever there's poles, it's going to cause stretching wherever the faces underneath are, stretch are stretching. We can do this weave a little better. And we can scale it. 
you can also do um, let's change the scale to back to one and I want to Z remesh this with uh, lower lower subdivisions and we can also use we can use poly groups to control the flow of those Z remesh the Z remesh mesh um yeah tripping out yo so let's try this at a two okay and now we can turn on micro poly it's gonna be ah it's still super small <clears throat> Align it, scale it, um, there's a whole bunch, there's so many, there's denim, there's da, 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 vortex, wire, this weave, this isn't bad, it's just so dense that it's slow in your machine. Hey, what's up Charlie? So will give us some holes in between. <laughs> so that's a that's kind of a quick way to add some texture to your surface of whatever you're working on. Um, I'm gonna align this. It looks like some of these aren't aren't aligning because it's a little bit confused. It'd be better if it, you you might have to retopologize something like this just to get the flow to be correct. <clears throat> oh yeah, lowering the subdivision level. Thank you, Paul. Glad to have you here, man. So are you talking about on dynamic or just lowering it? Because I lowered the count. But how do you lower the size? I'm trying to, I'm trying to see where that is. I can also add thickness to it. It's just adding more geometry. You are you talking about um, Paul? Are you talking about this, like lowering this, or on the dynamic itself? Like right here, subdivision smooth. Let's try that. Ah, here we go. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> right, right. Got you. I just found it right when you said that. <laughs> okay. Let's try one of these. <laughs> it's like grandma's sweater. It's like this, uh, it's like this, this hardened punk rocker with his grandma's shawl on. <laughs> oh man. Oh, come on. Don't go away. There we go. Weave, weave. This one. This one's pretty good. All right, we'll go with this one. Let's go with a gray. Navy blue, all right, navy blue. There we go. You can see all the, I actually like this, the subdivision, this, the live booing pieces in his hair better than the, the, than it being cut out, but I'm kidding. All right, there we go. Oh. Don't, don't crash. Okay, if this if this uh, crashes, I'm I'm done. <laughs> All right, one more thing I want to do. Well, let's fill this with a color. Can this go in all the way to a game engine? You'd have to do a lot of work to it to make it go into a game engine. But you could bake this into a normal map and put that into a game engine. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm just going to paint some highlights through this cloth. You can do that just with some light blue, something you can do. <clears throat> hey, Flip, you are welcome. Do more work. Practice. You know, I always equate sculpting or doing art to learning how to play a musical instrument. That's how you get better, is you practice. Keep doing it more. Here we go. Just paint some highlights. This comes from, like, I'm a, I'm a huge nerd, like a D&D &D nerd, and I love to paint minifigures. And uh, 
So some of my painting skills, if I have any of those, come from painting minifigs. There you go. Like we can grab this guy and select his skin color and darken it. Turn on symmetry. Darken up just where his neck is going into that shawl thing. I don't know. Let's, let's solo this. Got to get it out of the way a little bit. All right. What do you think about the new retopple workflow using edge move extrude with snap to surface and attraction? Uh, it's pretty good. It's good for creating. Um, it's good for creating props and surface details. Um, I wouldn't retopologize an entire character with it. Um, uh, and there, there's only one reason why, and that's because of the lack of, when I retopo, um, I really like to relax my surface across the surface. And I, I wish, and I hope they add it eventually, is if I want to, I want to hold down smooth, like a smooth brush, relax the topology and have it r maintain snapping to surface. That's the biggest caveat that I really want to keep. So, um, oh yeah, I need to pose his eyes too. Thank you very much for that. And then we're going to head out for the day. <clears throat> okay, let's. Uh... Whoa, might want to hide that sweater. It makes my machine slow down. Okay, I'm going to mask off this this iris. Just kind of move it. Whoops, it's mirrored. Thanks. It would help if I didn't mirror it. Now I'm trying to move too fast, and it's not helping me oh don't crash <laughs> okay hold on a second I'm gonna see if I can center the gizmo in this eye my hand as much as I can I'm gonna rotate this around <laughs> He's like wall-eyed. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, let's go over to this side. Oh, it's sticking out. All right, we'll pull it back in. <laughs> That's too funny. Uh, yeah, yeah, I I do that. Or there's so many other there's so many programs out there that will do uh, topology that I've tried. That there's some of them I favor more than others. Um, but yeah, I will usually do it in a different program. But if I'm creating props and stuff like that, I will definitely create them create it here. Let's get some of this really hot red into here a little bit more. Let's kind of pull it in here. Don't, don't crash. Okay. <laughs> you were, I hope not. He's like, I'm home, dad. <laughs> I told you to be home at midnight. And he gives you this look. <laughs> All right, you guys. Oh, I should have put it. I should have put a few hairs like right underneath right here, but that's all right. Yeah, I, I have used my effort topology in the past and it works really well, but I've used other stuff too. It just depends on where you're comfortable. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It's been a pleasure. And as always, um, I have an online course and um, I just barely started a brand new student challenge today. I'm really excited about it because I'm treating it like a freelance opportunity 
where um, someone has hired you and you can go through and create a collectible as if you were working for this person and then get, get some feedback at the end as if it's a freelance job. So um, really excited about that. If you want in on that challenge, go check it out, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. And as always, you can get my user interface and my brushes for free, same place, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Head over there and grab the brushes. Um, it's the exact same brushes I use, same interface and everything. Uh, you can check it out. So thank you so much, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a wonderful week, and we will see you next Monday. All right, take care. We'll see ya. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Paul. All right, we'll see ya.